Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alfredo Mercado, and today I will present a part of my PhD research on energy losses in low energy electron interactions for UJ electron radiotherapy development. Well, this work combines experimental data with Monte Carlo simulations with GN4 uh, tool to explore uh, what are the key electron interactions in relevant materials for biological purposes. In this image, you can see the effect, the direct effect of electrons in the DNA. So it's an overall overview to start for a good starting. So can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, targeted radionuclide therapy is a gradually more promising approach in oncology. So it works by delivering radio pharmaceuticals directly to tumor cells, ideally leaving not damage in surrounding healthy tissues. So what makes this strategy appealing is its potential to treat micro metastasis and single cells. In these situations, traditional external beam radiotherapy is struggled. So my research uh, focuses on understanding the physical behavior on low energy electrons, comparable to UG electrons energy and the interaction energies of backscatter electrons on a specific surfaces. Next, please. UG electrons are highly rebel, uh, rebel, uh, relevant for TRT uh, because of their very short range in tissue from nanometers to a few microns. So their energy typically ranges from a few electron volts up to uh, five, uh, 50 kilo electron volts around. So because of their short path lengths, UG electrons are highly effective at producing high density ionization. So when emittent near, near or within the, the cell nucleus, uh, the radionuclide is incorporated into the, the DNA and these electrons are classified as high linear energy transfer particles. So that means that they deposit large amounts of energy over short distances. So potentially it's contributing to increase the biological damage at the cellular level. Uh, next, please. Um, in, in this proposal, I used uh, the GN4 Monte Carlo toolkit with the Livermore physics list, uh, which is suitable for simulating low energy electromagnetic processes. Uh, here we can see the setup involved, and we have an electron beam that is uh, directed at, the, at a copper, copper sample with a 55 degrees angle. So uh, as well, we can see in color blue, the Bessel box electron energy analyzer placed at 50 millimeters of working distance from the sample, from the copper. And on the right, we can see our initial simulations where um, uh, we were executed for 50 keV incident electrons with 1,000 electrons per run. So these simulations will benchmark expected electron energy distributions before the experimental validations. So next, please. Well, we have the experimental setup uh, to complement these simulations. Experiments were conducted using a LEG 61 electron gun and we can see in, in, in gray that is inclined um, at 55 degrees to the horizontal. The emission spectra were recorded with a 
bezel box energy an analyzer that we can see perpendicular to the copper sample. And the emission energy of the electron gun was 900 electron volts. These uh, results provide, uh, provided the basis for identifying excitation mechanisms by analyzing the energy loss peaks. On the right, we can see a spectrum of um, copper. And uh, this in, in, on green, we can see the elastic peak. It's, uh, well, it's not quite visible, but it demonstrates the amount of energy that it was a uh, backscatter from the interaction with copper at these low, uh, those low energies of the, of the electron. So uh, next slide, please. Here uh, we uh, we observe uh, the uh, the characteristic uh, energy loss and what are um, in which regions we can see these um, losses in copper. The elastic peaks uh, are near 900 eV. The surface plasmon excitations between 885 electron volts and 897 electron volts. And the volume plasmon is around 878 EVs and the multiple coupled excitations below 878 EVs. These peaks uh, are important because they are help us understand how electrons transfer energy to the material and reveal the mechanisms such as surface and the volume excitations which are relevant for modeling bioequivalent materials behavior in radiotherapy contexts. Uh, next slide, please. Here we have a comparison of the electron energy distribution. And this slide shows us a distribution of backscatter electron energies from the copper surface. The relative intensities uh, confirm the characteristic uh, previously described, validating the excitation regions and give explanation of loss mechanisms between experimental work and the simulation work. Um, next one, please. Uh, this slide, we can see the energy loss by angle, but is the angle of incidence and how it affects the energy loss so at 90 degrees, we observe dominant elastic scattering. The angle, when the angle decreases more, 55 degrees and then 10 degrees, surface excitation becomes more prominent. So surface plasmon losses decrease significantly at 55 degrees, but rise again slightly at 10 degrees. These angular dependencies can let us know how important is the impact of the incident angle. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the electron simulation in water, now this is important because we have to translate these findings to biological scenarios. So I simulated electron backscattering in water using both Livermore and GN4 DNA physics list. Uh, the Livermore model shows um, broader scattering and higher intensity around the, the elastic peak, while DNA predicts slightly less buildup in that region. So these comparisons allow us to um, validate, to assess which model better approximates electron transport in soft matter environments. Uh, please, the next slide. Well, we perform as well the UJ equivalent electrons in tissue. So to simulate UJ like electrons, I simulated 10,000 electrons of 10 kgV. 
these uh, are interacting with soft tissue by using the Livermore basic list. The results show an average amine energy deposition depth of around one micrometer and a mean trunk length of 2.4 micrometers. These numbers align well with a biological expectation for audio emitters. So highlighting their potential for precise targeting in radiotherapy. So in these uh, histograms, as, as we can see on, on the left, this is very visible what is exactly the depth of, of these um, electrons with, it, with this energy. We chosen this energy because it's more related to the gallium, the gallium isotope that is used in clinic. So as well in the distribution that we're uh, watching on phantom depth on the, on the plot that is on the right, in this part that is in yellow, we can see more contribution of the deposition energy of these electrons. So, um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, to conclude, uh, the Livermore physics list works well for low energy simulations in general, but has limitations for energies below 2050 electron volts. At these very low energies, it can, um, it can give unrealistic results, missing interactions, which make is, uh, makes it less reliable, less dependable for accurate simulations at the nanoscale. That way, our future work will include more uh, vessel box energy analyzer experiments, but now on bioequivalent materials. So we will expand simulations using a new simulation tool that is called Microelectronics Physics List. It said that it um, has a better uh, accuracy around these low energies, and we will get the validation through the reflection electron energy loss spectroscopy data as well, in order to improve the how we model these uh, medical radio isotopes. Well, this is in grand in grand part uh, my project about, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. We have a few minutes to take some questions. I... Thank you, Alfred. Very nice talk. Um, so, so you compared this Livermore library with the DNA one, is that correct? Yes. And you assume that the DNA one is more reliable, and that's why you conclude that um, it has non-physical behavior, the Livermore library? Are the yeah. data for this also? Uh, yeah, well, Livermore shows uh, artificial spectra features below that energy, 250 EV. So uh, we try to solve that problem with... Um, um, with some um, some linear regressions that are applied on GN4, but it seems to be well, the it lacks low energy interactions below 100 dB, and it's it uh, it was doing very wrong all those simulations. So in contrast, in, in contrast with the with GN4 DNA, it includes more detailed uh, track structure physics and greater uh, um, accuracy at the at that uh, nanometer scale. But the problem is that it's very intense computationally. Or why don't you use then the Xeon for yeah. the? Yeah, yes. For for those energy, it's starting getting stuck with that amount of of simulations that they're doing at once. So, 
Yeah. Viking. You are using Viking for the computations? No, uh, no, I'm using um, Gen4, Gen4 in... Yeah, yeah, no, I was referring to the machine, if you are using the the, the cluster machine of the, your Viking computer. Uh, no, no, I'm using uh, Ubuntu, yeah. Any other question? Hi, Alfredo, you know, here. Nice talk. Uh, I think in one of the slides, um, slide number seven, I believe you had given a, a table of all the energy ranges. Uh, that one. Is it like uh, in the second column? Is it like per electron? Because the energy can, the nor uh, when you give the plot in one of the next slides, you give normalized counts on the y axis, right? So, how do I understand the second column? Uh, yes, yes, of course. In uh well according to some previous experiments um we will provide we, we were provided with some um ranges of energy specific for uh, three three thousand electron volts the electron emission of the of of the electron beam inside the copper and the other spectra that we got is uh, one thousand evs so if we um Interpolate that that plot. Uh, we can um, state we can say that some of the ranges that we have these losses are in, for example, in the elastic peak. This is the ranges of um, of the of an energy that is losing after interaction with copper. In the third column is the Energy loss is the amount of energy that is lost. So, uh, as we can explain in this um, in in this graph, in the beginning, all of the most of interaction are elastic, and we have a contribution for phonon losses. That well, but it's around fifty micro electron volts is very low energy, and um, in that way, if if we can, um, if we can put that graph on the right upside down, we can get the same uh, histograms that we uh, get later in the next slide. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Right, but well, we had a, a few minutes delay at the beginning, so if if uh, we don't have any um, burning question, we'll move on to the second speaker. Uh, thank you, Alfredo, again, for your uh, nice talk. Thank you for listening.